Welcome back. Once again, uh, we'll be looking at the fourth and the final section of this presentation. And I trust the Lord that God will perfect all He has started in Jesus' name. So for this session, we'll be looking at the three vital tools for kingdom entrepreneurs in this generation and our ordination to solve global problems. So the very first thing we want to look at is the tool of vision. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, we see the Bible says, I will stand upon my watch and set uh, me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain. The vision is set for an appointed time. Uh, we have a contemporary tool that we can use to analyze our vision here on it. And that tool is called the Wheel of Wellness, which was uh, founded by Dr. Bill Hetler in 1976. So what Dr. Bill Hetler, who worked for the YMCA as a medical doctor and a psychologist, uh, and is also a Christian, talked about, you know, what is your own personal vision? What is your personal vision? And uh, in our context as entrepreneurs, my question is, what is your personal vision as an entrepreneur? Uh, is it just to make money or uh, a mission here on net? Uh, I think, you know, we need to define that clearly. And what Dr. Bill Wettler did was uh, to conceptualize the old framework on that six dimensions, where we now look at our life in a several dimensions on the, uh, our spiritual life, wellness, our physical wellness, our intellectual wellness, our financial wellness, our emotional wellness, social wellness, occupational wellness, as well as our environmental wellness. So these are the uh, eight, eight areas that Dr. Bill Wilter, you know, talked about, you know, how we having a personal vision. And uh, the benefits of this have been tremendous. For me, I started using it in 2010 uh, when God started speaking to me clearly about my life's vision, which is uh, to, you know, help in the body of Christ raise global entrepreneurs across the world. And uh, I've seen that being manifesting gradually in my life. And these are the five benefits I've seen accrue to me. Number one, it gives me a holistic perspective about life. I don't just think about life as just here to make money. Making money is just one part of my life's goal. And uh, it's just one segment out of several of the segments and the goals. It also gives me that balanced idea. You know, I chase all the goals uh, in a very balanced way. Financial life, my health, my emotional well-being, my social network of contacts, my environment, you know, uh, my business, and I incorporate all of all this in my business. Also, the third advantage or benefits to me is it helps me integrate all of my personal values into just one box. Uh, we, 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 or we can call it a wheel. I can see it as just one wheel. Uh, all my personal goals, my values are integrated. You know, into that one will, will. And then number four, it helps me identify areas of growth where I need, where I know I do that, know that I need to grow aggressively. I put my effort into that spiritual life. I need to grow. I put my effort into that uh, financial life. I need to grow. I put my effort into that, and I review that every year. I have a goal for each of these areas of my life, and uh, monthly I also review them. Uh, as the auditor, chief auditor of my own life. And then number five is, it gives me a comprehensive well-being, you know, about my own personal life. And what's more important than that, than just live life as God ultimately wants us to live. And uh, so for me, I have a vision book, which I have yeah, there, my spiritual goals, my health goals, my career goals, my financial goals, my academic goals, my family goals, my uh, social goals, which are my network of contacts, my relationships, people I keep. And this has helped me tremendously. And I know that, you know, uh, this would also help someone in Jesus' name. And uh, the next 
um, tool we're going to be looking at is the Buster Dog Profile, which is a business tool for creative problem solving. Now, Buster Dog Profile is a tool designed to identify an individual's preferred problem solving style within a creative context and uh, you know formulated by a canadian marino sydney bastard who worked and consulted for companies like Proto and gamble and he helped that company transform massively you know into what we now know the company to be as in uh, in, in today's world and if you want to compare uh, the bastard profile uh, to the bible uh, i see where jesus christ said you know hi I've, I've given unto the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, you know, and all of all these are gifts God has given. And uh, each one has a part to play in the old propagation of the gospel. In the same way, the ambassador profile, you know, uh, each has identified that each of us as individuals, we have a preferential way of solving problems in a creative manner. Some of us are generators. Some of us are conceptualizers, some of us are optimizers, and some of us are implementers. Now, the question is, what does each of these guys do? As a generator, you like to brainstorm ideas, and you like to just generate ideas. You see someone on your team who just talks a lot about ideas, you know, has ideas flowing left, right, and center, innovative ideas, and is thinking that person is a generator and uh, if you have someone on your team who likes to analyze and conceptualize ideas and he enjoys strategic thinking he's always seen the big picture you know is that person who is focused on you know thinking big that person who is most likely a conceptualizer and if you find someone in your team who enjoys refining ideas and he likes to perfect them each of those ideas would like to perfect them fine-tune them you know, uh, he pays detailed attention to little, little things. And it's, and it's also uh, a systematic, you know, uh, a way of doing things that that person will probably fall in as an optimizer. And the last category are the implementers. These are the people who thrive in executing and implementing ideas. All you just need to do is just tell them this is the goal, this is what we want to achieve. Give them the whole idea. The next thing you see these people, they are just going head on, achieving, pursuing, and you see them thriving in doing that. People like, you know, the expert salesmen, like uh, Jack Walsh, leaders who are, you know, concentrated on just one assignment. And, uh, you know, they are practical, uh, in, you know, like in nature. They have, a vertical, they have a very practical approach in doing things and they are very results oriented. These people are under the implementer category. So we have four of those uh, creative ways of solving problems. We have the generators, we have the uh, conceptualizers, we have the optimizers, and we have the implementers. So these are the four, you know, that each person, you know, is, uh, you know, falls under one of these categories. And I see that, you know, if we identify that, we'll be able to find problems and solve those problems in a, in a creative way. And it will also help us by, you know, helping us to embrace diversity, you know, that I can't do it all by myself. I need people. I need to work in a team, you know. It also helps us to, you know, work effectively as teammates. And we appreciate your value for who you are. And I you too appreciate my value for who I am. And we can work together as a team. And companies across the world, like Coca-Cola, like Microsoft, Siemens, 3N, uh, Unilever, IBM of these worlds, GE, uh, Johnson & Johnson, Proto & Gamble, I would say, and even uh, Lockheed Martins, which is a, you know, one of the largest uh, ammunition company in the world, they hold, implement, and use the Pasador profile in the organizations. And it has transformed all these organizations as innovative companies. And I trust God that as you embrace this knowledge as well, your company from small shall also be a global company in the name of Jesus. And uh, the third 
So what I'll be looking at today is uh, the business model canvas, which was uh, founded by Alexander Osterwalder from Switzerland in collaboration with Professor E.S. Pignor from Belgium in 2005. I, would, uh, I won't go too far into this, but the uh, business model canvas is a strategic management tool that helps business to visualize and assess the business model at one glance. You just your business at just one glance, like in the Bible it says, you know, make it plain. You know, it makes your vision very plain, and then you can run with it. And it consists of nine components that provide a comprehensive overview of how a business creates and delivers value to its customers. I won't be able to talk about all the nine, but I will just talk about the two most important and just mention the remaining seven. The first most important is the customer segments. The customer segment defines the different groups of people or organizations that your business aims to reach and to serve. It also uh, segments your customer base uh, you know, into categories based on uh, the demography, their needs, uh, their behaviors, or any other attributes that you think is very important. The second most important part of this uh, business model canvas is the value proposition. This is very, very important because it describes uh, the entire bundle of products and services that your company would create to add value for your specific customers segment that you have identified. You know, that bundle of products and services that you innovate to solve their problems. The value proposition will address three vital things. Number one, it will address your customers' problems. Number two, it will address your customers' pressing needs, the needs that they want to solve uh, or they want to address right now. And number three, it would uh, also make clear and provide the reasons why your customers should choose your company and not another company. So in, in a nutshell, it gives you that opportunity to give, you know, to be, um, uh, you know, to show your, uh, we call it the core competencies, you know, your competitive advantage in the marketplace. The other uh, seven um, components of the business media canvas, I will not read, I will not define everything because of our time, but I'll just drop a link in the comments box and I can go further and, and study. We have the channels, which uh, you know just talks about uh, marketing and distribution just channel. We have the customer relationships, how, uh, describes how we, uh, the types of relationship we keep as a company and um, you know with our people, our staff. And then it also, the fifth segment is the revenue streams, which just identifies the ways a company generates income from each of the customer segments. And number six, we have the key resources, which list all the most important assets that are required to make your business model work properly. You have the physical, the intellectual, the human, and the financial resources. And then number seven, you have the key activities, which identifies the most important actions that your company must take in order to operate successfully. And uh, this also includes the areas of your production, your problem of solving methods, uh, the methodology you use, the uh, platform, and even the operations management that you deploy in your organization. And number eight, we have the key partnerships, which outlines the uh, network of suppliers, the partners, and the entities that help your business achieve its objectives. You know, the strategic alliances, the joint ventures, and the, you know, key strategic relationships that your company keeps as partners. And then number nine, you have the cost structure, and this defines the cost involved in operating your business model. You know, what are the cost centers, and then how do you optimize your economies of scale, and even, uh, you know, uh, manage your cost management. You know, uh, what are the strategies you deploy as a organization. So the most important thing and the benefits of this business model canvas is it can be used for a startup when you are just beginning your business and even uh, a scale up at any point in time. That's the beauty 
of this business model canvas. If you're small, you can use it. When you're just starting your business or launching your idea, you can use it. And even well, companies who are 10 years, 20 years, even 100 years down the line, they still use it because it provides a very clear and a concise framework for understanding, developing, and improving your business model from time to time. And uh, it also fosters uh, strategic thinking and innovation within an organization. So finally, as we round up, I believe that as kingdom entrepreneurs, we are ordained to solve global problems in this generation. And uh, you see that the United Nations have, have identified 17 um, categories of problems that the world is facing, and they identify them as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I believe that each one of you um, listening to this, watching this, have a skill, capability, talent that can address one of these 17 global problems. Either it's poverty, either it's education, either it's a, a, a climate change uh, problems, um, the life on the sea, life on the water, I mean, uh, life on land, innovation, inequality, sustainable cities, and uh, community uh, providing decent work and uh, economic growth. There are 17 of them. Clean water, you know, uh, we all have a skill, an ability, talent, uh, gifts that can be manifested to solve any of these problems. And that's why God said that as Christians and believers, that ye are the lights of the world. We are the lights of the world. Uh, we are the salt of the heads. He said, we are a city that is set on a hill and we cannot be hidden. He says, let, no, he said, let our light shine before others that they may see our good work and glorify God the Father in our lives. That's why I believe that you know, we all have a, 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 you know, a path into this, to solving global problems. As entrepreneurs, that's what we do. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 4, we have been uh, instructed to arise. Uh, you know, arise out of obscurity, arise, arise out of shame, arise out of depression, arise out of uh, confusion, arise out of reproach, and shine, shine in the, in brackets, in what we do, shine in what we do, and shining by doing something. We can only shine by doing something. And we have already looked at it, that the real, the real meaning of an entrepreneur, the word entrepreneur, is do something. And we do something to the glory of God. And I want to end by saying that God is raising an army of kingdom entrepreneurs in this generation. Uh, Joel chapter 2 made it very clear that uh, this kind of army, a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame of fire. And it says, and the land shall be like the garden of Eden. Can you imagine? It goes back again to the garden of Eden. And it says that, you know, the appearance of these people shall be like horses and horsemen, and they shall run with strength, with vision, with focus, and uh, none of them shall break their ranks because everybody shall be running, you know, in his own paths. And that's you and I, because we have been ordained to solve global problems. You know, a new generation uh, of uh, uh, people like uh, John G. Rockefeller, who founded Standard Hoy, uh, a new generation of kingdom entrepreneurs like David Green of Obi Lobby, a new generation of kingdom entrepreneurs like Mary Kay Hash, who founded Mary Kay Cosmetics, a new generation of kingdom entrepreneurs like uh, Stripe Masu Wiwa, who founded uh, Econet Wireless, a new generation of entrepreneurs like uh, R.G. Lotenio, who founded the Heads Moving Equipment, Caterpillar, a new generation of uh, entrepreneurs, global giants like Sam Walton, who founded Walmart, uh, and a new generation of William Colgate, who founded the Colgate toothpaste that many of us use today. Uh, a new generation of kingdom business women like uh, Folorisha Alakija, uh, one of the most influential and uh, wealthiest African women. And a new generation of um, Asa Chandler, who bought the formula that transformed what we now know to, uh, to be Coca-Cola. You know, a new generation of 
people like Henry Crowell, who uh, founded and um, his company produced Coca Hots. I believe that you are going to be the next. I believe that you are going to be listed amongst the giants. And that's why I know that the very first thing that we need to do is to say a word of prayer for anyone who uh, knows that you want to be part of this, this giants, this army. But you know that something tells you that, first of all, you are not in right standing with God. I would like us to pray together a very short word of prayer uh, that God have, um, have mercy upon me. Uh, God uh, set my heart with you so that uh, I can be in full reconciliation with you as my heavenly father and I can uh, have the clarity of vision to do what you have ordained me to do here on it. I want to admonish you to pray um, that prayer of salvation, confess uh, your sins before God and trust God that you know he would embrace you and um, you'll be listed among these kingdom giants as entrepreneurs in the name of Jesus. And in case you've said that prayer, you can always reach out to uh, Pastor Isaac Oedepo uh, through the link um, uh, org forward slash receive dash Jesus. Uh, send a, a mail to that, or a message to that link and you'll be adequately followed up. And uh, by God's grace, your global giant heritage as entrepreneurs made manifest in Jesus name. Thank you very much once again for this session, for listening to me. And I trust the God that we serve that you shall be listed among the global giants of this generation in Jesus name. Keep praying, keep solving problems, keep creating value as we advance the kingdom of God here on earth. God bless you. See you next time. Bye for now.